in something we hardly knew anything about, but you're there, so we want to be there. Thank you, Father, for this love that you have for us. Please be with the entire service to honor and to bless you. In Christ's name, amen. Well, it's turning out to look like another beautiful day in Pennsylvania, and it's very appropriate for the Lord's Day, wouldn't you agree? Would you also agree it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Yep, amen. Every day is a, a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Would you please stand? Let's offer a word of unified prayer to the Lord this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> time after time, I went searching for peace in some void. I was trying to blame all my ills on this world I was in. Surface relationships used me till I was done in. And all the while someone was begging to free me from sin. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. He was there all the time. Never again will I look for a fake rainbow's end. Now that I have the answer, my life is just starting to rhyme. Sharing each new day with him is a cup of fresh life. Oh, what I missed. He's been waiting right there all the time. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently in line. He was there all the time. Oh, it's a one-trick pony show this morning. I think I have the responsive reading as well. Yeah, it was supposed to be a, kind of funny, but we'll leave it go. Okay, we're on. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. <clears throat> she is more precious than rubies. And all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Her ways are ways of plentiness, and all her paths are peace. <clears throat> the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath founded, hath he established the heavens. <clears throat> My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion.
Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and foot shall not stumble. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Thank you very much, everybody. Number 377 in your book. We're going to be singing verses 1, 3, and 5. Stand, please. When heaven's with his praises, praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin and dwelt among men. My example is he. it on the screen so if you want to grab a hymnal there you should be in the chair right in front of you underneath it's number 377 right that's right, right. so let's you want to grab a hymnal or maybe you know it by heart in case you don't need it <laughs> One day they left him alone in the garden one day he rested from suffering tree. Angels came down o'er his tomb to eternal. Hope of the hopeless, my Savior is he. trumpet will sound or is coming one day the skies with his glory will shine wonderful day may Lord word was bringing glorious Savior this Jesus is mine Freely forever, one day he's coming, oh glorious day. How many of you knew that song? Okay. How many of you know it now? Yeah, how many of you know it now? Okay, would you be seated please? This song we're going to sing one, two, three, and five. 
One, two, number 365. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who Trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise. Not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign or a tear, can abide where you trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but it's blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And in fellowship sweet, we will sit at His feet, or we'll walk by His side in the way. What he says we will do, where he says we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Good job. Amen. Good morning. I see everybody out this morning. Before we get started on our usual program here, uh, this month is Pastor Appreciation Month. So at this time, I'm going to ask Pastor John and Carolyn And Pastor Jim and Sue to come up front, please. Don't hurry. Take your time. As we just sang the song, Trust and Obey, um, we are to trust God and obey Him. And as we have shepherds in this chapel, uh, Pastor Jim and Pastor John, and their families, don't want to forget their families, but as they do listen to every one of our complaints, our sorrows, um, 
we go to them with a lot of our problems. And very rarely do they come to us with our, their problems. So I want everybody to keep that in mind. Um, I want you to, every once in a while, just check in with them. See how they're doing. Make sure they're okay. If they need anything, just say hi. Um, because they get a lot from us with our problems, like I said. But uh, who do they go to? So if you get a chance, just check in with them. We do appreciate everything you guys do and your families for this chapel. Um, we do have a little gift for each one of you. Pastor John and Carolyn. And Pastor Jim and Sue. Well, maybe it is that way sometimes. <laughs> but we do want to thank you guys for everything you do. Um, I know it's not enough to say thank you, but this little token is, is uh, appreciation of what you do for this chapel. So thank you. She gets the flowers. No, she gets the flowers. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we do birthdays and anniversaries, Pastor Jim, I would like you to come up here to the pulpit. I want you to open your envelope up, if you would, please. Is it my pink slip? <laughs> <laughs> yep, it is. God has another door open. <laughs> well, that's true. I do have two trustees right behind me. <laughs> Pastor Jim and Sue, with serving hands and loving hearts, you give your time and your lives to the work of the ministry. We pray that you will always feel in support of our continued prayers and our deep appreciation for you all. We're grateful to God for both of you. Uh, from your grateful congregation, thank you for all the ways that you serve. God bless you both. Thank you very, very much. And let's see what we got here. Oh! Wow! Um, we are going to the Penn State game October 23rd. All right. Thank you. Wow, that's awesome. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. You, you know, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but for the first few hours of this morning, the sky was dark, and it was gloomy, and I know that was God's response to our failure in playing Iowa last evening, because we lost. All right. So, but God proved that it was only a game, and the sky is blue and white once again, preparing for next week. Uh, so, but thank you all very much. We've been here for 18 plus years, and it just seems sometimes that you snap your finger and whew, that 18 years has passed, and here we are. But we are grateful uh, for all of you, for uh, all of your support, all of your prayers. Is it true that there are good days and bad days? Yeah, it's that way with anything in life. Uh, but uh, I don't feel, and I think Sue and John and I don't want to speak for you and Carolyn either, but um, there, there's no other place that we would really rather be. Uh, we love all of you. You treat us wonderfully, um, and uh, you have an open mind and heart to receive the, the truth of the word, and uh, we are so grateful and so appreciative of it all. Thank you, Thank you and God bless all of you. <laughs> all right. That's right, Jack. Alabama lost last night, too. They did? <laughs> yes, they did. Texas A&M beat them last night, so, yeah. One thing could have been better with Ohio State going down. <laughs> All right, where am I at now? Oh, birthdays. No. <laughs> okay. Just so y'all know, Pastor Jim is not sitting in the nosebleed section at the Penn State game. He is what wrote 50 yard line. Just to cut. Yeah, well, it says you're right here. So, yeah, he was just surprised he's seen Penn State tickets in there. So, am I looking at that right? Okay. Well, I hope you have a good time. 
birthdays this week. We have Caden and Ben, Crystal, Missy, uh, Dave Buchanan, Larry Sarvey, Tom Davis, and Sandy Lindemuth, all with birthdays this week. Is there anybody else with a birthday or one, anyone we missed last week? Happy birthday. Okay, happy birthday. I, uh, there are no anniversaries. Is there anybody we do not have on our list for that either? Oh, it's Donnie and Missy's anniversary. Okay. Happy anniversary to them. Okay. Um, announcements here. We Care Pregnancy Center. Um, baby bottle totals were $10,059.76. Yes. Um, also, uh, clipboards I see in the front pews here. Savannah, can you grab that one over there and send it back that far side? Clipboards here in the front pews here need sent back. Um, I think it's still for our celebration. It is. And, uh, Dan, one of the, the things that we neglected to put on there, if it's all possible, if everyone could bring a covered dish and a dessert both, if okay. you can't, that's, that's perfectly fine. Okay. But we just want to make sure that we're, that we're adequately covered. Okay. Uh, we are trying to get a head count, but yeah, we would also sure like you to bring, if you're planning on coming, to bring a covered dish and a dessert also, if you're able to. We would appreciate that. Um, also, Samaritan's Purse Operations Shoebox. I see the boxes are here. Uh, it's, time, it's that time here again. Pick up your shoebox in the foyer. It is on across from the restrooms out there. And we have a video for that, okay? Let me read this one announcement here real quick. Um, the quilting ladies wish to thank, <clears throat> excuse me, all those who donated fabric or cash to help with the making of the blankets this year. Blankets were distributed to Dominican Republic, refugees of Africa through the UNTO ministry, patients at the Clarion, Ca Clarion Cancer Center, and also the children and youth services in Brookville. We will continue to sew through the fall and the winter, moving blankets for those, or making blankets for those in need and those who need encouragement. If you would like to help, you can uh, see Pat Chapman or Carol McGiffin. Job well done, ladies. Thank you. Uh, are there any other announcements this morning? That's all I have. Miranda. Okay. Friday evening on the 29th of October at 6 o'clock, we're having a family game night here at the chapel. Uh, bring a board game and come and have some fun. And also on October the 30th, what time, Miranda? 8 a.m. Uh, prayer breakfast at Plyler's Restaurant in Brookville. Um, all are welcome for that. So, any other announcements this morning? Sue? Okay. Next Sunday, uh, Sue is starting a new Sunday school lesson. Uh, okay. Okay. And what is the name of it? Surrendered. Okay. Um, that is the women's Sunday school class that Sue leads on that. So if you're interested in that, you can see Sue and get a book for next Sunday for that. Any other announcements this morning? Um, just want to remind everybody, next Sunday is our uh, 125th uh, anniversary celebration. Uh, it's not a celebration really uh, for us, but it's a celebration of what God has done uh, for us and this church in a, a century and a quarter. You know, when you think about that, um, it kind of blows your mind a little bit, doesn't it? That uh, this church in different forms has been ministering this community for uh, over a century plus. Uh, but next Sunday, there's only the 10 o'clock service. There will be no 8 a.m. service. 
Uh, directly following the uh, 10 o'clock service, we'll be having a luncheon that we already talked about as well. Um, and starting at one o'clock, uh, we'll be uh, having uh, music at, by Mike Zafudo and his, uh, his people. Uh, we'll start, Steph Hefner is gonna sing some. I'm gonna attempt to bring up joyful noise along the way uh, myself. Um, uh, uh, Jenna was scheduled to, but they're gonna be away, and Brenda Weaver was scheduled to, but she can't make it either, so we had to slim line. But we, Pastor John's gonna lead a hymn sing uh, later in the day. We have a puppet show for the, for the kids, all kind of uh, games uh, for uh, uh, little ones, teenagers, adults, just, a, just a, gonna be a great time of fellowship and celebration. So I'm gonna ask you, if you do your best to please come and uh, invite your families and any friends that would like to come out as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's a day to me that's certainly worth celebrating what God has done. So thank you. One other reminder, uh, after this, before the conclusion of the service today, we are taking up a love offering for uh, the parents that have children in Christian schools in the, in the church here. Uh, we're gonna divide it up between the families. So. Uh, like Pastor Jim said, if, it, if you're able to help contribute to that, we would greatly appreciate it, and so would the families. Are there any other announcements this morning? Okay, at this time, uh, we're going to have a video on the sh shoeboxes. Seeing a child open the boxes for the first time is just, it's incredible. There's squeals and screams, and they are so excited to see what's inside their box. Oh, my goodness! Every shoebox gives represents the love of God to them. We are so excited. Many of the children receive the shoebox for the first time in their life. Yeah. We're here with Operation Christmas Child. The kids are so excited. We had the opportunity to hand out some of the boxes. There's so much joy, so much happiness, and it gives us an opportunity to present the gospel. We pray that these boxes will be used to bring a lot of happiness and joy, but more importantly, the gospel to each heart, all these little children around the world. What a great gift. I get a present, I get to know who Jesus is, but not only that, I get to be discipled in his ways. Hundreds of thousands of volunteers work with Operation Christmas Child every year, preparing these boxes, praying for the boxes, that God will use them in a mighty way for His glory. This little shoe box has the opportunity to change the world. Not only are they going to get a shoe box, they're going to get the love and the message of Jesus Christ. Some go by helicopter, some go by ship, some go by camel, donkeys, canoes. We go at great lengths to take these boxes to children in the most remote parts of the world, and it's an incredible journey. After these children open the box, they have the opportunity to go through the greatest journey, the 12 Lesson Discipleship Program, where they get to learn more about Jesus Christ. Right now, I'm right outside of Mazlan, Mexico, about six hour drive up in the mountains. This is an indigenous people group, people that never heard the gospel before. The kids and the families that accepted Christ, almost a hundred all together, have now started a church. This shoe box gives us an opportunity to continue to shine the bright light of the gospel in the darkest and remote places around the world. We're seeing families come to know Jesus. Churches are sprouting up in these communities. These children are rising up to be disciples in their own country. Jesus Christ bring hope to our children to bring the smiles back on their faces. No greater need and no greater time than right now for us to go out and serve boldly. This is what these shoe boxes are all about, to go out and bring a hope of Jesus Christ around the world. I'm just so amazed at what God does each and every year. 
This is an opportunity to impact the lives of millions of children, just like you've seen. But we need more boxes for next year. Every box is an opportunity for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So thank you, and God bless each and every one. Okay. Yes, thank you for heading that up. Okay, prayer and praise time. Out of the book this morning, uh, for, uh, Unspoken is for Josephine Garber. Uh, de for depression and moving, moving state to state, and also a trip to Mexico for granddaughter and her daughter. Prayer for Jim Slagle family. Jim passed away on Friday. He was Ben and Mary Waldorf's neighbor. Uh, continue prayer for, Jer uh, for Gary Hoffman, and traveling for travel mercies and for his family. And Gloria Smyers uh, is in the hospital. That was a grandmother in your old church, Carolyn and Pastor John's old church. So prayer for Gloria. That's all that's in the book this morning. Is there anybody else? Leanne. Okay. Prayer for her. She's in the hospital. And the first one was uh, Donna Hetrick. Donna Hetrick and family. Donna passed away. Jason Bundy. Yes. In Pittsburgh. Okay. Uh, prayer for him and his family. They're there. They're starting now to get some test results back and things. Okay. Uh, keep Jake and Bundy and family in prayer. Uh, Pastor Jim said Jake and is still in. Children's in Pittsburgh, and they are just now getting some results from some of the tests that they ran. So, prayer for Levi and Heather. Uh, Eric. Uh, thank you. In your churches, uh, Marty, and Ed Sanfero, uh, keep having some bad health problems, and uh, just start praying for Okay. Prayer for Anna Mae and heart problems. Okay. Miss. All right. Okay. Colleen Silvis um, passed away this, this week. Uh, she was planning two weddings for her daughters. So prayer for that family and prayer for B. Uh, he is graciously with us today, home from school. It is. Uh, his, him and his cross-country team travel this week, so prayer for traveling mercies for that. Uh, who did I miss over here? Bill. Uh, Nancy has an appointment tomorrow at 4.30 at Laurel Eye with a retina specialist. Okay. 4.30 tomorrow afternoon, Nancy has an appointment for her retina. Okay. Yes. Bonnie. Yeah. Okay. Okay, prayer for Pat for health and wisdom. Dawn. Okay, Alicia and Corey, they both for health there. Okay, Janie. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, continue prayer for uh, Karen Pangallo with her cancer. Yes, Mike. Wow, praise God there. Uh, praise God for your grandson. Good results from test. Miranda. Okay. Traveling mercies for David and the kids. Okay. Josephine. Okay. Good, good. Continue prayer for Josephine and her recovery from her back surgery. Okay. Any others this morning? Okay. Unspokens, yes. Anybody else with unspokens this morning? Okay. All right. Bill, would you lead us this morning in prayer? Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Bill. This time, would the ushers please come forward and take up the offering this time? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and the opportunity to come in your house. I thank you for all the many blessings you give to each and every one of us, Lord, and as we give back a small, small portion of what you so richly bless each and every one of us with, we just ask that it may be used to help further your kingdom, Lord, to spread your word. 
We ask that you be with the trustees as they use it where it's most needed. And we ask that you bring each and one of us back safely next Sunday, Lord, for, and be with those who could not be here today for whatever reason it is. Now we ask a special blessing on Pastor Jim as he brings forth the message to us today, Lord, that it may be something that we'll be able to use in our own lives and to help others that are lost. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord, and we ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Reminder, there is no junior church today, so you may turn and shake hands with your neighbor. All right, kids, recess is over. Time to return to class. All righty. Pastor? Yes, Pastor? I don't know if I wasn't paying attention. Is this the announcement or what? Uh Thanks, Pastor. Okay. All right, if you have your Bibles today, would you please turn to the Gospel of John, John chapter 20. If you don't have one with you today, if you have a bulletin, uh, it is also in an insert in uh, today's bulletin. And we are going to be looking at verse 24 through 29. Give everybody just a moment here. But Thomas... One of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas was uh, with them, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and saith unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. But blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his divine, inspired, infallible, and inerrant word of this morning. Uh, Roger, would you ask the Lord's blessing upon the message for us today, please? Roger. Brandon, did we have the, did we have the Booth Brothers um, video for today? 
I forgot all about that. Let's just hold off till next week with that, okay? Um, every few weeks, I'm going to be presenting a video of the Booth Brothers in one of their songs. Uh, I, I was a little surprised this morning in the first service that, uh, when I asked if, who was familiar and have heard them uh, before that very few people did. So I thought this would be an opportunity uh, to kind of uh, show who they are and, and how they sound and so on and so forth. Uh, so we're just going to wait till next week and uh, do that then. Okay? Thank you. All right. I talked to J.J., about when I was uh, filling the pulpit there last week for us. And I said to him, I said, now I said, I've been uh, giving a, me- a series of messages uh, called Hope is Here. And I said, so I'm going to leave it up to you. I said, you can either finish up the series, and I'm fine with that, or you I'm on up front here, B. Now we're on again? Okay. So anyways, he said, nah. He said, I'd rather you finish up your series. Uh, So we did have that one-week gap uh, in between the messages. Um, But today is our concluding part of that four-part series of Hope is Here. And if you remember, uh, we joined in with somewhere around 15,000 other churches across America, uh, all coming to an agreement of heart, mind, and spirit in an effort to bring America back to church again. And um, today, again, is that concluding uh, message in today's is hope for the doubter. Our first message, I'm going to ring your ring some bell here, hopefully. Our first message was hope for the weary. The second message was hope for the broken. And the third message was hope for the underdog. So this will be the concluding aspect of uh, these messages. I think we have our hands full, honestly, uh, in what we're trying to do uh, as a unified body uh, across this great country. Um, because I think as well, I know as well as you do and probably many other people do, that people will have and offer and give a myriad of excuses of why not to attend church on Sunday mornings. And um, it's not just an anomaly uh, here in this area or uh, anywhere. It's, it's a trend and um, again, people have their, their own reasons. But if you attend church, if you're here today or uh, watching live feed today and you're able to uh, attend church, um, would you agree with me that there's nothing like camaraderie and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ? I look forward to Sunday mornings. I, I really do. Um, and that is... Uh, to be able to preach and deliver the, the gospel, but, but also for the uh, camaraderie and the fellowship uh, that I have uh, with all of you as well. So reaching out to the community, reaching out to the, to the unchurched, um, it's a worthy effort, and we're making that effort, and we're going to continue to make that effort. But I think behind it all, I think we're gonna ha- it needs a lot of prayer. Uh, behind it and ask, getting the Lord's direction and, and uh, how to approach people and how to do so. One of the things, points that I was, I've been trying to drive home in these messages is, is that um, we can't just say to people, just, hey, come to church. Right? I think we have to give them reasons to want to come or to come back uh, to church. In the first three messages, I think, I think the Lord gave us good reasons, you know, that we can uh, ask people and tell people, you know, why don't you come back to church? Come back to your camaraderie and, and fellowship. If you're weary, okay, let us help you in Jesus' name. If you're broken, let us help you 
in Jesus' name. If you feel like you, have, like you have done so much bad in your life that you can't be forgiven of, and you feel like you're the underdog, let us help you in Jesus' name. If you're doubting your life, if you're doubting your relationship with God, come back. Come, come back into Christian fellowship and camaraderie and let us help you in Jesus' name. Because remember, where Jesus is, there is hope. Jesus is here. So herein and therein, we can offer hope for the weary, for the broken, for the underdog, and for the doubter. You know, life is tough, isn't it? It can be. And, and, and that's not stretching anything. And the society and the world that we're living in, I think uh, it, it's, it's getting tougher by the day. We look for hope. We look for reasons to have hope. And now and again, we can find a nugget uh, along the way. But this world can't offer consistent hope. It can't offer eternal hope. But you know what? We can. We can offer it through Jesus, the blessed hope, the only hope, frankly, of any of us and of this world. We need to take advantage of those things. We do. If you, let me think how I want to phrase this. If you think that you will find the hope that you're desiring or that you may be searching for or that you need, if you think that you're going to find that in anything that this world offers, you're going to be really disappointed. Okay? Because it's never going to be able to supply that of heart, mind, and spirit. But Jesus can. We don't ever want, as a Christian, as a church body, to let anyone influence us or convince us or uh, try uh, to tell us that the world, that our community isn't worth the effort because they most certainly are worth our effort. Will we succeed? I don't know. But I'm also not willing to take failure as an option. <laughs> We have to move forward and let this world and this community and this area know that hope is here. Not because of us, but because of Jesus. We need to be Jesus to the world so that they can have hope. We need to introduce them or reintroduce them to Jesus. Because we can't give them strength when they're weary. But Jesus can. And he could do it through us. We can't heal the brokenhearted. But Jesus can. And he can do it through us. We can't convince the underdog that they can be victorious, more than victorious, more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. But Jesus can do it through us to help them. We can't, by our means, take someone who is a doubter and replace that doubt with faith and trust. But Jesus can through you and me as a church and as a church body. If you're here today or you're watching a live feed, if you're weary and heavy laden, Christ can give you rest. He can renew your strength. If you're broken of mind, body, and spirit, it's not the end of your story. 
your final chapter hasn't been written yet. Jesus can heal your mind, your body, your spirit. Did Jesus not say, I have come to heal the broken hearted? You've got to give them a chance. There is no sin other than the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that you could have ever committed or that you may be committing now that you cannot be forgiven for. Your sins that may put you in a position where you feel like you're an underdog spiritually, those sins were nailed to the cross. Jesus bore our sins. If sins... If sin has you in a position where you're mentally, physically, and especially spiritually an underdog, Christ will bring you the victory. He will bring you the victory. And if you're here today, or you're, again, you're watching, and you have doubt, you have doubt about life, you have doubt about self, you have doubt about God, Jesus can replace that with joy. He can replace that and give you fullness of mind, heart, and spirit once again. Jesus can, and Jesus will, if you let him. And brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to be Jesus to the world. Right. The disciples doubted. You know, sometimes I think that we unfairly chastise and belittle Thomas because of the fact that he has, had been given the title of the doubter. I think he, along as with the, all the other disciples up until this, these two moments in time, I think they had serious doubt of whether Christ's promises were true. Maybe they even began to doubt their relationship that they had had with Him and the promise of eternal life. Maybe they doubted that the promise of the coming eternal king, millennial and eternal kingdoms were ever going to happen now. They were weary. They were broken. They had become underdogs because their hope had died on the cross of Calvary. So they believed that they were up against it. Why do we think they were all huddled together in the upper room? Because they were terrified. They were terrified of what was going to happen to them because there's no question in my mind that the, the, the events of uh, that, that weekend that the uh, uh, events, all the negative things that had happened, losing their leader, losing their Messiah, losing their hope, when Christ gave up the ghost, oh, I think it was bearing down on them. Why do you think the door was locked? Because they were fearful that they were next. If the Romans and if the Pharisees could take their hope and nail him to a cross... And then he died on that cross. What in the world could they have in store for them? So through their weariness, their brokenness, that underdog thought, yeah, sure, I can see where doubt crept in. Absolutely. But you know, they're not the first, nor will they be the last people of God that ever doubted. Abraham doubted. He doubted that God would deliver him and he and uh, Sarah uh, from, a, from a, a king. But you know what? God didn't leave him hanging. God wasn't really pleased with them, but he brought him forth. He delivered them, right? Moses, Moses doubted. You know, that cat, he, he came up with every excuse under the sun. I can't do this. I can't do that. You don't want me. I'm not the guy. Did God leave him hanging? No. God delivered him. 
And he became the great deliverer of God's people from Egypt. Jacob doubted. Yep. David doubted. Didn't he? The great prophets of God doubted. Isaiah and Ezekiel both heavily doubted what their future was because they had a price on their head and in their day they were both running from a wicked king and queen that were out to kill them. Do you not think that they didn't have moments that they doubted? Sure they did. But without a doubt, no pun intended, God never just left them. He delivered them from that doubt. And He proved to them that they could have trust and they could have faith. And through Him, they could have hope for a brighter day and a better tomorrow. So the, 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 the disciples in this upper room, they weren't the first to experience doubt when it came to life and their relationship with the Lord. Where Jesus was, there was hope. Where Jesus went to, there was hope. Where Jesus is, there is hope. Jesus appeared to his disciples on this evening to bring them hope again. To replace their weariness with strength, their brokenness with healing. The, them being a, a, an underdog, he, he showed himself to them and revealed to them that, as the risen Savior. They weren't an underdog. They were more than conquerors through him, Jesus Christ, that strengthened them. And yet, can you just imagine the reaction from those disciples when just out of nowhere, poof, there was Jesus standing in their midst? Could you picture just like a flood of different type of emotions? <gasps> you know, fear right off the bat, you know, and then maybe, and then finally realizing, okay, it is the risen Savior. It's the Lord. But Jesus appeared in that room that night to bring hope back to these weary, broken, underdog spirits and souls. He did. And was he successful? Yeah, he sure was. Now, I got a question for you. And it just left my mind. <laughs> I knew things were going too well. I, I just totally can't think of what it was now. All right, so I'll replace it with this, something I didn't do in the first service. Do you think that when the disciples first heard his voice and when they saw him in that upper room, do you think that maybe they thought that they were imagining maybe just for a moment that maybe it was too good to be true? Maybe, okay? You know, sometimes whenever, especially those that are in doubt, and maybe you've experienced this, because I have, that when we are told things, that have you ever thought in your mind, no, that's just too good to be true, I can't believe that, you know? Or have you ever also been told something and you think to yourself, oh, whoa, that is too far-fetched. That is way out there, okay? Uh, that's way beyond what I think can be accurate. Have you ever done that? Yeah, I have. I think you probably have too. So I want to I do something here this morning. I'm going to offer you a couple things. And if you think I'm telling the truth, I want you to raise your hand. If you have doubt, or if you think I'm a, a, an outright liar, God forgive me, okay, 
uh, then keep your hand down, okay? Yes, I believe. No, I don't, all right? The Japanese developed a square watermelon because the, the space, available space in that island, string of islands, is very, very small. So they developed these square watermelons to stack them on top of each other to save space. Now, if you think I'm telling you the truth, raise your hand. If you think I'm not, keep your hand down. Okay, the, the I think you're lying through your teeth, Jim, crowd just won that. No, you did not. Because they did develop a square watermelon to stack to save space. Now, yesterday, I read that NASA had made an announcement that today, this evening at 6 p.m., the moon was going to start to break into pieces. And here's why. Because people had been going to the moon and stealing the Swiss cheese <laughs> because there was a shortage in the world of Swiss cheese for Reuben sandwiches. Now, if you think I'm telling you the truth, raise your hand. Pa Pastor John, my buddy. Eric. <laughs> All right. Now, didn't that sound so far-fetched that not just immediate doubt, but recognition immediately occurred, right? Wouldn't you? Wasn't it? Okay. Those are just two examples, actually several, <laughs> that I wrote up. All right. But what about the disciples? Do you think that when Jesus spoke to them and they saw him physically, do you think that maybe some of them immediately believed? And maybe there were others that thought, no, no, this is too far-fetched. This is too, this is just too crazy. This is too good to be true. I could, I could see either side of those emotions there. Jesus didn't come to that upper room to see those disciples to disprove that he had been resurrected from the dead. No, he came to prove to them that he was resurrected from the dead, that there was no doubt that he was telling them the truth. And then it sounds to me like they all said, okay, we're in it, we're in it. All right? We all believe. We have no doubt any longer. But there was one that the Scripture explicitly tells us was missing from the group. You know who that was. That was Thomas Didymus, or he was even called the twin in the, in the Scriptures. I personally believe that that was, had been a divine plan. I think it's very possible that Thomas could have been the doubter within that core group of disciples. And Jesus, knowing that, wanted to reveal himself directly to him, one-on-one, -on -one, to prove to him this is true. Because you remember, Thomas shot off his big fat mouth. They said, we've seen the risen Savior. He said, no, you didn't. He said, there's no way you could have seen the risen Savior because he's dead. He said, I will only believe if I can put the finger in the, in, in, in the hole in his hand and I can take my fist and put it into the gaping hole that had been there from the, sword, or the spear. He said, only then will I believe. Do you think that maybe Jesus used that to specifically one-on-one -on -one go to Thomas and say, stop doubting, man. <laughs> right, it's true. And do you notice in the Scripture text that we read? Jesus didn't say a word to any of the other disciples, did he? It said he appeared, he showed up, just showed up, and he said directly to Thomas, peace be still. 
And then he challenged him, didn't he? He said, Thomas, here I am. I'm right here. Come on. Put your, put your finger in, my, in the, the nail, the nail hole. Go ahead. Take your fist. Put it into my side. If that's what you need to believe, Thomas. If that will leave your doubt, then go ahead. Thomas didn't do so because Thomas knew immediately that it was truth. That what Christ was telling him was truth. That Christ, the resurrected Savior, that it was true. Jesus didn't come to Thomas. Neither did he go to any of the other disciples to disprove his life, but to prove his resurrected life. And you remember Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Right then, I believe Thomas' weary mind, his weary body, and his, and his weary spirit was strengthened again. Why? Because Jesus was there, and Jesus gave him hope once again of the resurrection. I think Thomas was broken. I think he was broken mind, body, and spirit. And Jesus, at that moment of time, I believe, healed him and gave him strength anew. Because you see, where Jesus was, he brought him hope. I think that Thomas, like all the rest, but maybe him particularly, felt that they were the underdogs, that the gospel was over, the ministry was done. What would they do and where would they go from there? But Jesus changed all that. And I think he proved to Thomas, you are more than a conqueror, my son. Because I'm the one that strengthens you. And will strengthen you day by day. Why did that happen? Because Jesus was there. And Jesus gave him hope. Thomas doubted, I think like the rest of them, but maybe more severely. Jesus renewed Thomas' faith and trust in him and his promises of everlasting life, of the future kingdoms to come, kingdom to come. Why could that have happened? Because Jesus was there. And where Jesus was, where Jesus is, and where Jesus will ever be, there is hope. There is hope for the weary. If you're weary here today or you're watching, if you're weary, Christ can strengthen you because He is your hope. If you're broken, Christ can renew your strength because He can give you hope. If you feel like you're the underdog, like you have sinned so much or so badly that you can never be forgiven, well, think again. Because Jesus can heal you spiritually. Jesus is more than willing to be your mediator and your intercessor for his Father to forgive you of anything that you've done. And maybe, even now, maybe listening to me, maybe you're doubting. Maybe you're doubting about something in your family. Maybe you're doubting about your health. Maybe you're doubting about your job. Maybe you're doubting if this COVID things and, and all these things that are going on, if they're ever going to come to an end. Maybe you're doubting these things. 
But let me remind you once again where Jesus is, there is hope. Absolutely. Thank you. Amen. We have a yeoman's job in front of us, church. We have a yeoman's job of relating the truth, relating to this community and beyond that hope is here. But I think through these four messages that we have found some of the keys to saying to our friends and neighbors and families, come back, come back or come to church. Come back. Come be a part of something bigger than yourself. Come be a part of a church family that wants you to be here, that loves you, that is willing to do whatever it takes through Jesus' name and through the power of the Spirit to renew your strength if you're weary. Through the, power, uh, through the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, please come. Please. Let us help you heal from your brokenness. Let us be able to, to use the reason of their underdog status to say, Do you know what? This isn't the end of your story. Your chapter, you still have chapters yet to be written in your life. You're not an underdog because Christ is here and He is hope. And we want to help you through Him in the whole power of the Holy Spirit. And if they're doubting relationships, life itself, maybe they're even doubting God, then what better way to witness to them than to be Jesus to them? To help them to have faith renewed, to have trust established or reestablished in God. I think we have been able to come up with four pretty strong things and reasons to offer the unchurched to come on back. Or maybe you've never attended church. Come to church. Not just to fill a seat, but come to church because we want you to be a part of the body of God and of Christ. We want to help you. We want to minister to you. No strings attached. Because people, hope is here. Hope is here because Jesus is here. And where Jesus is, there is hope. Hope to strengthen the weary. Hope to heal the broken. Hope to restore the strength of people for them to realize and once again understand that with God being for you, who in the world can never be against you. You're not an underdog. You're a soldier of the cross. We want you to become a soldier of the cross. And if they're doubting, through our words and actions and our deeds, let's prove to them, beyond a, no pun intended, beyond a shadow of a doubt, Christ is here. And where he's at, there's hope, and there's hope, and hope is here through Jesus Christ. Because the culmination of all these messages to me comes down to this. This world isn't going to get any better, folk, until second Christ's return. Okay? It's going to get worse. We're living in the latter days, folk. In the latter times, 
If you don't think that, then you're living under a rock and you're not paying attention. If ever there was a time for the church to reach out to a lost and dying and hurting and suffering world and communities, it's now. May our words and actions and deeds resonate through our communities, through our state, through our nation, and into the world that Jesus saves. And through that, there is hope. Hope for the weary, the broken, the underdog, and the doubter. Are you any of those today? Maybe. If you are, you know where your hope is found. It's found through Jesus, isn't it? Maybe you're watching today and you're one of those folk. Well, Jesus is here. He's right there in your living room too. Just for you. Jesus did not die for a religion. Jesus died for us to have a personal relationship with him for all of eternity. Hope is here. Where Jesus is, there is hope. Jesus is here. Jesus is with you. And that, my friends, concludes our four-part series of Hope is Here. I hope that maybe through one of these or whatever the case may be, that maybe if you were weary, maybe it's helped to strengthen you. Maybe if you were broken, that it's helped to restore yourself. Maybe you have been an underdog. Maybe it's helped you to realize you're not an underdog. Not with Jesus, you're not. And maybe you've doubted. And maybe something that was said in these messages has brought you where you're going to doubt no more. That you're going to have that complete faith and trust in God and Jesus as the blessed hope. Let's take these messages from here and let them go to here and then let them go to here and then let them go to here. Jesus is the hope of this world. And the people said, Amen. Amen. At this time, Dan, we're, we'll uh, take up the love offering, please, before I uh, finish up the service.
On behalf of um, the church families that will be receiving uh, these uh, donations, I want to thank you very, very, very much. God bless you. At this time, would you please stand? The altar is going to be open for you. If you're here today or you're listening or watching and you're weary, broken, you feel like you're an underdog or you're doubting, give it to Jesus. Give it to the Lord because he can make you whole again. Because where Jesus is, there is hope, isn't there? The altar's open for you. I can't save you, but I can bring you to the one who can. And that's the hope of all men. Jesus Christ. And if you're a Christian here today and maybe you're part of this group that we've been talking about, the altar's open for you too. It's nothing to fear. It's something to go to. Bring those burdens to the Lord and let's talk about it and pray and so you can leave them there. All right? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace and through Christ Jesus, you are the blessed hope. You are our hope, our past, our present, and our future. Lord, I ask, Father, that if there are any, Lord, that have been suffering and have lost hope, that you would restore that, Lord. Use us. Use us, Lord, in your name. Let us be your your voice. Let us be your feet to take this, your hope, to our communities and beyond. Lord, we thank you for all of your blessings, Lord. And we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're about to do. In Christ's precious name I pray. Amen. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And now may the love of God, the joy of His Son Christ Jesus, our Lord, Redeemer, Savior, and soon coming King, and the peace and the power of the Holy Spirit, may they go with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. And amen. I need to meet I need to meet those people down at the front here for just a few minutes. So thank you. God bless you. Blessed be the ties of bind.